Hey guys, I'm Houston Curtis, and welcome to The Bottom Deal. So I thought long and hard about doing this video. Um, I searched, scoured the internet for a good free bottom deal tutorial. And uh, suffice to say, I couldn't find one. So before we even get into this, I want to tell all of you, especially those who've never done the bottom deal before, um, you really need to go read the books, get the expert at the card table, and do yourself a big favor and make sure you buy Jason England's bottom deal tutorial uh, available on Theory 11. He goes through three grips, uh, they're really, it's really well taught, very professionally done. So aside from that, uh, I've really saved a bunch of my master level bottom deal techniques for million dollar mechanics. But I've had enough of uh, my students and uh, new subscribers reach out and ask about it. Uh, so what I thought I would do was give you a, a real insight as to how I approach the Erdnase grip only. For those of you who don't know what that is, uh, the Erdnase grip comes from the 1902 classic, The Expert at the Card Table, and it is a push-off bottom deal. Let's go through what the original text taught us. Alright, first of all, the way you hold the cards now I've seen a finger here, uh, I've, but essentially you're putting your index and second finger on the upper side of the deck with your uh, third and fourth fingers around the corner. So it's it's like a modified mechanics grip, all right. And the the edge of the deck kind of places right into the palm there, so you can you should be able to lock it. Now. What I like to do is, you know, take about 20 cards. I have more here, but take about 20 and start pushing those out with your third finger by just holding it with the left or with the uh, index finger. You see? Let me show you that again. So right now I'm just holding it with one finger. This is a great exercise, and what you're doing is you're you're just to get the card out, it has to be loosened. Okay, so you're pulling it down to loosen it just a little, and then sliding it out. All right, and you can practice. You can go through the whole deck doing this if you want. Then you could switch it and hold with the second finger. And this is it's just an exercise, okay, um, to get your dexterity up because the grip will seem difficult at first. It takes a few weeks of practice. Erdnase originally taught us that you push over the bottom card as you're pushing the top card out to be dealt. And the way I believe he did this back then, now you got to remember this was in 1902. This is before anybody knew how to spot a bottom deal. So I, I believe that he was using a deep knuckle uh, on, the, on the bottom card so that you wouldn't see it on the side. Now you can see how that works. Okay, so pulling it up and pushing it over. You can't do that today. All right, whenever you see that knuckle flash, you know somebody's bottom dealing. So, a lot of guys have started doing the push off where they, they don't need to pull it down to unbuckle it, they can manage to just slide it out simultaneously. I don't like this either. And the reason I don't like it is because usually one of the, the, the bottom card is noticeable when you do them congruently. Okay? Especially if someone's sitting across the table from you. So what I like to do, I slide that top card out as I'm coming in for the take, and you there's you can't see any other card but that one. 
all right? And then I reverse it once I get there, okay? So essentially what's happening is I'm sliding the top card out, and as I slide it back in, I slide the bottom card out, okay? So they pass each other like thieves in the night, as I always like to say. All right, so this is an exaggerated version, okay? But you do not need this much push. Matter of fact, you barely need to push at all, all right? Once you find what I call the sweet spot, that's the area where you can use the least amount of pressure just, just to break that card off a fraction of an inch, okay? Then when you come over, that bottom's ready to be taken. Okay. Uh, if you already know the ordinary grip, this is a different take on the take. Okay. Uh, aside from that, motion is very important, as well as the placing technique. I call it take and deliver. So you've got the grip, you've got the way the card is taken and delivered, and lastly the hand motion. Let's start out with the take and delivery. All right, so in a, lot of, uh, in a lot of card demonstrations, you see a lot of placing, okay? So this is a placing technique, where you're just placing the cards down on the table. And there's nothing wrong with this. Um, it's fine for demonstration purposes. However, this won't fly uh, when you're under fire in a real game. Nine times out of ten, you need to learn how to pitch the cards, okay? Uh, so, and I challenge a lot of you guys who aren't even gonna, you know, do this for money, uh, to try and learn the way uh, we have to do it under fire, because I think it'll make you just a, a better mechanic in the long run. So if you don't know how to pitch cards, that's the first thing you got to learn. You know, stop this video, go find another video that teaches how to pitch cards. All right, I'm going to give you a quick um, overview. When you're sailing cards you, and you push off and it, you come in for the take, it's that second finger and thumb. The thumb grabs it and you brace it with the first finger and it's the second finger that pitches it. Okay, see how that is? And you, you can, there's really a lot of speed. You know, this is when you're dealing around the table. Okay. Let's say I'm going to be dealing uh, the bottom card to the, uh, the far right position. Okay. So you want to practice it, dealing it in every position at the table, including to yourself. So aside from learning how to sail, uh, I'm going to show you one other taking technique. Now in Million Dollar Mechanics, we're going to get into some really advanced taking techniques, including an amateur take technique. And I call it amateur because it's supposed to look like an amateur technique. All right. Um, that. We'll save that for another day. But what I will share with you, here's a taking and delivering technique that I love. It's called the two finger toss. You're pushing out to the right, and you're coming in with fingers one and two, and tossing. Toss. It's a very casual technique. Toss. Now watch when the bottom comes out. See, see how fluid that is? Okay, a lot of fluidity there. The two finger toss is a great added convincer. There's just something, uh, something about it that uh, that I've always loved. I think the first time it was ever mentioned was in Marlowe's book of second centers and bottoms. Uh, I think that's the first time that I ever saw that in print. Um, <clears throat> but he was doing it from a different grip. But that's how you do it from the ordinary grip. Okay. It's, it's really a, a beautiful technique. I have in the past used the two-finger technique to crush souls 
it is a soul crusher. And you could sit and deal yourself bottoms all day. And they're, they're just never going to know. Okay. Um, so that is the two-finger toss. Work that into your practice routines. So now you have three ways um, to take the cards. Okay. You can, you can be doing a placing technique like so. All right, you could be doing a sailing technique. Or you could be doing the two finger toss. Okay? Another thing is you can take with your first finger or your second finger. Okay? But you really need to learn both. There's going to be reasons why you should use one or the other. You know, when you are sailing the cards, you need to be able to, to take them. It's better to take them with the first finger, meaning when you come in for the take and you do the push-up, it's your first finger that's making the trade there. Okay. As opposed to uh, the other way to do it is your second finger. Okay. Now the second finger pro provides a little more cover, um, but you need to learn to do it with the first finger as well. Okay, it's very important. So let's get into the third very important aspect, motion. Motion is crucial, okay, especially when you are dealing with bottoms from a full deck which is something I know, you know a lot of people have to work up to. But let's use a full deck for this example. I use three different motion styles, and I incorporate all of them depending on the deck, the company, the situation. Uh, I suggest that you learn all three and master all three. So the first is just side to side. All right? Now whether you're placing... Or, or sailing. For now, we're going to sail. So side to side is the, is the first way. So you're just going side to side, and when you're ready to uh, either sail or place your ace, your bottom card, that motion creates um, a really smooth transition. So, side to side is motion number one. Motion number two is the inward or backwards circle. Okay? Now, with, with this, you are circling with your hand towards yourself. Okay? And as you do, you're releasing cards. This is, has a really fluid motion to it. Okay? That's from a full deck. I like doing the two finger toss with the reverse circle. Uh, there's something uh, really fluid about it because you're coming out and boom, that's, that's a bottom right there. You know, you could, you could place it that way too. So you're coming around to yourself and boom, it just kind of drops in a position for you like magic, only it doesn't look magical. <laughs> so when you combine either one of these motion techniques with the proper taking and sailing technique uh, with the ordinary grip, it's, it's going to create a very invisible bottom deal for you. Okay. The third motion technique that I, I, I want to talk to you about is the exact opposite of motion number two. This is an outward circle. Okay. Now you can't. This is kind of the natural, um, uh, the natural motion when you're dealing stud. We're not going to get into that right now. I'm going to save that for million dollar mechanics. However. Uh, there's also times in a game where, you know, kind of slapping the cards down is uh, called for, you know? So it's your buddy game or a, or a frat house game, and you can see with that motion, 
just creates too, there's too much going on to tell that a card is coming off the bottom. You know, no matter where you put it, let's put it over in the fourth position. Okay, so to recap, we have our side to side motion. Okay, our backward circle motion and our outward circle motion. So if you master the take and delivery techniques that I've taught you uh, and the motion techniques for the Ardennes grip, uh, you can make this practically invisible. But the Ardennes grip does have an Achilles heel. What is it? Unfortunately, it's the grip itself. Because even though 90% of the people you're sitting with uh, at a table won't know what this grip is and won't even think about it, the other 5% of the guys out there, maybe that's a high percentage, but let's just say if I'm at the table, I don't even have to see you deal a bottom to know that if you're holding the deck in this manner, you're planning to. All right, so that's the problem. Okay. Having said that, let's focus on the other 90 or 95 percent of the people who don't know what it is, uh, because you really need to learn the Erdnay's grip before you move on to the Phantom grip and the Mechanics grip and the Invisible Bottom deal, which is ultimately where I will take you in Million Dollar Mechanics. The way to become a master at bottom dealing isn't just in learning a grip or learning a take and delivery. And learning the motion, you have to understand rhythm. And there's no better way to do that than to put yourself on a timer with a beat, okay? And try and always maintain the right pace. That could be fast, that could be slow, but it needs to be consistent. If you stutter, if you stutter on the take, that's a tell, okay? And it's a, a lot of bottom dealers stutter on the take. All right. It's something that you really have to work on to uh, eliminate. Now, one thing that I like to do uh, when I'm doing my full uh, deck practice is take 13 cards. So let's just take the four aces and then five, six. If you want, you can take like all the spades or whatever. Um, add the joker to the deck because then if you deal four... Uh, around a four, one, two, three, and this is your, the bottom is your fourth, uh, you can go through the whole deck that way. But what you're going to do is you're going to be doing this to music. And this is the reason why I like Tom Petty, because it's four on the floor. A lot of his songs, it's just that straight ahead driving rock beat, and you can really, uh, Learn to build a great rhythm dealing to that. Otherwise, just use a click track if you don't want to listen to music. But definitely practice your rhythm. Um, it's, it's crucial. Pet peeves. All right, I'm going to give you some things that I hate. One thing I hate to see, for some reason I'm seeing a lot of it on the Internet, is this business of over swinging? I, I don't know where the hell this came from, but it's uh, a lot of people are doing this big looking like trying to make the deal look too magical. Okay, you don't want to make a bottom deal look look like you're doing magic. You know, it, it should look you know it's totally cash, and and they're flashing the card when. Uh, Let's just say that these are turned right side up. I see this a lot. So it's coming up. You can see the card right through there. And it's this big sweeping motion. You know. And it's, it's like a real magical thing. Alright. That is not how to pull off a bottom deal under fire. Okay. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop doing that.
Stop doing that. But in spite of it all, you've never really been able to stop doing that, have you? But now, there's help. Uh, so, strike that from your repertoire, because it's a huge pet peeve. And any pro will spot that a mile away, and you'll be toast. The guy who constantly has to place the cards is another annoying thing for me. Now, if you happen to play in a game where you're at a tiny table and that's just how everybody deals the cards, that's fine. Otherwise, you need to stop doing that. You really need to learn uh, how to pitch the cards. All right, so in summary, uh, with the Erdnay's Grip, we've got the uh, Thieves in the Night, the Take and Delivery, I uh, showed you a placing technique, uh, as well as a sailing technique and the two finger toss. And then lastly, there's your three uh, motions. Okay, so go to town, and uh, I really hope that uh, all of you guys um, comment, tell me what you want to see next. I know every guy that signed up. Like I, I watch, uh, I'm usually at the computer writing or doing something when I see, oh, we got a new subscriber. So I'm aware of all of you guys, uh, and I really appreciate uh, you signing up. I know that we're, uh, we're a small group right now with just about a thousand subs. Uh, that'll change, but I, I'm, I'm actually fine with that right now. Maybe this could be the best kept secret on YouTube. Who knows? Uh, all right, so... Look, this was some pretty advanced level stuff. I hope that uh, uh, you soak it in, practice a lot. Um, make sure and go read all the other books out there. At least read Erdnays right now. And check out Jason England's uh, Bottom Deal tutorial. I think you'll find it uh, very complimentary to what you learned here. Uh, and as well as to the kind of things that I'll be teaching on Million Dollar Mechanics. Uh, Alright guys, uh, this is Houston Curtis for Card Shire, and I'll see you next time.